Today I'm going to talk about a paper by P.A. Parsons named Fluctuating Asymmetry, a Biological Monitor of Environmental and Genomic Stress. So, to understand fluctuating asymmetry, first we need to understand what symmetry is in relation to an organism. Uh, with this lobster right here, we're going to call him Larry. He's perfectly symmetrical. If you divide him down the middle and you were to make a mirror image of him, he'd be symmetrical. As you can see with these graphs right here, uh, average lobster um, has a two centimeter wide claw on the left and on the right. So, if you look at the bell curve right here, average lobster, there's zero fluctuation. So, for fluctuating asymmetry, say, Harry and his friends experience some kind of stress when they are developing. One claw might become a little smaller. That would shift one of these curves a little bit to the left. And that would, in turn, shift this one to the left. And this induced asymmetry is known as fluctuating asymmetry. As we saw previously, Larry the Lobster's friend had a decreased claw size due to a stress. Today we'll cover two types of stress, genomic and environmental stress. Genomic stress is any major genetic changes that can disrupt normal physiological processes, causing unforeseen phenotypic changes. We have three examples of genomic stress here. First, people with Down syndrome, characterized by three 21st chromosomes, typically are found to have increased dental FA. Um, this is simply because having three 21st chromosomes is a major assault to the uh, to the organism's genome, and this type of uh, syndrome results in a totally unrelated or seemingly unrelated um, effect. Inbreeding can also cause increased FA, as well as transgenic organisms. Transgenic or organisms are those that have DNA added into their genome, and Parson, Parsons notes in his paper that the extra DNA added into the, into the genome of transgenic or organisms um, is essentially more work for um, the cells to transcribe all of the DNA, uh, resulting in increased FA of um, multiple systems. The second type of stress that we're going to cover is environmental stress. Uh, the example I have here is of sand lizards. Sand, li sand lizards as Embryos develop normally at 25 degrees Celsius. If you were to lower the temperature to 20 degrees or increase it way up to, say, 30 degrees or maybe even 35 degrees, you would start to see changes in the lizards. Say, a limb might be a little shorter on this one longer on this one, and meat and tail on this guy. So, the symmetry of these lizards is affected uh, when they're developing at an abnormal temperature, and that is one example of environmental stress. In conclusion, uh, in today's world there are a lot more stressors acting on organisms. Such stressors might include acidifying oceans, climate change, or humans creating transgenic organisms. Watching out for fluctuating asymmetry will be a good way for humans to judge whether there is biological stress on environments and act accordingly. Thanks. <laughs> did you smile again? Okay. I did it after you did. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it.